In a world where men just can't stop thinking about Rome. How often do you think about the Roman Empire? Three times a day. The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. Where even a pointless, awful looking sequel can be made. You will be my instrument. Who are you? One show will seek to combine Peaky Blinders with Gladiator. Those about to die. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? I think it's safe to say that there seems to be a growing reemergence of interest in the ancient empire of Rome. Perhaps it's because we find ourselves in an ever-collapsing empire and seek to find answers. Or maybe it's because of some stupid random TikTok trend. I don't know. The point is, Roman entertainment is on its way. And not the type of Roman entertainment we'd really prefer to see. I'm not saying we should bring back gladiator fights to distract us from our crumbling society, but, you know, maybe. No, instead we're getting things like a sequel to Gladiator that looks terrible. It just looks awful. But it also means we are going to get random Roman content like Peacock's new series, Those About to Die. Peacock? I know, I also forget that they exist. But since I am a man who also thinks about Rome, mostly the fall of Rome, I decided to sit down and give those about to die a watch. And it was just okay. Which is a shame because there is some really good stuff in the show. But for every good thing, there is an equally bad thing to counter it. For every well-constructed storyline, there is a poorly constructed storyline that makes no sense. For every well-developed character, there is a character that is terribly developed and overall pointless to the show. This even applies to the execution of the show itself. For every great acting performance, there's an equally awful acting performance. For every good CGI scene, there is a questionable CGI scene. And so on and so forth. Which is why I'm left with saying the show is just okay. There's a lot of good stuff here, but with a lot of bad stuff that needs to be fixed or just cut out. So, for my highbrow critic score, I give Those About to Die a 6 out of 10. And for my schmo score, the score for the average Joe Schmo, I give it another 6 out of 10. Now, this is the part where I explain my ratings by getting into the story, so if you would like to see For Those About to Die, spoiler free, this is where we part ways. Thanks for showing up, and I want you to have a nice day. Unlike the trailers would have you believe, this show has actually very little to do with gladiator fights. Sure, there's some in this series, but it's more of a side story to one of the main three plots. Those About to Die follows three main characters and their respective storylines, with various little side stories that sprout out from each one of them. But the main three are Kala, the savvy Nubian trader who chases after her children after they are wrongfully enslaved and taken to Rome, and who will do anything in order to set them free again. There's Tanix, the former poor street urchin who's risen to power, now owning a gambling house that bets on horse races, who seeks even more power and influence by fixing races and using crime to his advantage. And lastly, you have Domitian, the sneaky, conniving, youngest child of the current emperor, who, of course, wants the throne all to himself, but is blocked by his older brother, the dutiful soldier. Kala gets entangled with Tanex to help free her children, and Tanex uses Domitian's ambition to further his own, connecting the entire story together. Now, if you were hoping for a series full of action and gladiator battles, you will be disappointed. Because this show is a political drama that focuses mainly on the three, as they use their wits to outplay each other and Roman society at large. There is a lot of violence and gore, but it's not the main event. 
Oh, and the show also takes a page out of Game of Thrones, where if you're a woman in this series, you are most likely going to be naked at some point. There is a lot of nudity in the show, which I found mostly gratuitous, but when in Rome, I guess. <laughs> no, the real problem with the show is the stuff I mentioned earlier. All the dumb, bad stuff that weighs down the good. Take Tanix, for example. Half his storyline is basically the Peaky Blinders. A poor kid who came from nothing, now running a horse race betting house, cheating and using crime to take control of the slums of Rome. Then leveraging his power in the underworld to gain even more legitimate power in the eyes of Rome. Which is all great. It's well written, engaging, and overall entertaining to watch. But then there's the other half of his storyline, which is his past coming back to haunt him. And it is so poorly written, it doesn't even make any sense. So this guy he knew as a kid comes back to take revenge on him, but his reasons for revenge don't make any sense. How he goes about getting his revenge doesn't make any sense. And how the whole situation is resolved don't make no sense. Why is this even in here? You could have cut all of this out. You should have cut all of this out and filled the gaps with something else. Another example of bad weighing down the good is in the side characters. You have good side characters in side stories, like the three brothers that come to Rome to sell their horses, but get entangled in the hustle and bustle of Rome, leading to some of the most compelling parts of the series. Then you have side characters like Aurora, one of Kala's daughters, who feels like the writers had nothing for her to do after the inciting incident, so she just does random things that don't make any sense. And it all just comes off as a waste of time and annoying. Like I said, there's always a bad to equal out the good, which is frustrating because this is an ambitious show that really goes for it. I know I mentioned the CGI earlier, but for a series with this large of a scope, the visuals, for the most part, are actually pretty good. The show also does have a lot of fantastical stuff in it though, like a volcano going off at exactly the right moment to save our hero from a certain death. But then again, I guess what would be a story about Rome if it wasn't over the top fantastical wise? I think if they had gone for 10 episodes that were only 30 minutes long instead of an hour long, they could have cut out a lot of the unnecessary stuff that just weighs the story down. So do I recommend those about to die? Sure, for a certain audience. If you're into Rome and historical dramas and have a lot of time on your hands, you could easily do a lot worse than this show. Anyways, thanks for being here. I appreciate you, and I'll catch you at the next one.